Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX. And welcome to our class number three and your foundations or building your foundations or building your the blocks of foundations. The first class we looked at was charts. And then yesterday we reviewed trend lines and trends. And today we're gonna to be looking at the third concept you need a master regardless of how you wanna trade and that is support and resistance. Now, each one of these classes is completely independent. In other words, you don't have to come to one class and go to the next and go to the next. You can come randomly. You know, we offer all of these classes every month. So you can come at your pace um, or what's convenient to you. But most of you are all trading with the ETX at the moment. So you know that ETX is a regulated provider. So I'm therefore required to give you a risk warning. So let me read it and get it out of the way. Trading in the financial markets can result in the loss of the amount invested. Do not trade with funds that you cannot afford to lose and seek advice if you do not understand the risks. All information that's provided in this webinar is for educational purposes only. ETS Capital and the presenter are not financial or investment advisors and do not recommend any securities or instruments of any kind. Any securities or instruments that are mentioned throughout are for educational purposes only. Now, for those of you that don't know much about us, we are a fast growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, that's the Financial Conduct Authority, the regulatory body for the United Kingdom, which also passports us throughout the Eurozone. And we have a broad global client base and we're a member for, of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with ETX, you have choices of all our different platforms and you can trade on one of them, all of them, you can use our Trader Pro platform, our ETX MT4 downloadable platform, or at present our ETX binary options platform, which is going away very shortly. Um, but we will continue to offer our ETX Pro and our MT4. So you have an online choice or a downloadable choice. You can have both or either, whichever you'd prefer. Just contact customer support if you need help getting one, one of the other platforms. Now tonight we're gonna to be talking about support and resistance for primarily CFDs and Forex. And it's not a difficult concept to understand, but it's an important concept. Now, it is falls in the area that we call technical analysis. A technical analysis sounds a little bit scary, but basically anything that is done on a chart is called technical analysis. So the field of technical analysis could go from patterns on charts to oscillators and indicators to simply a trend line. Anytime you're using a chart and putting something on that chart, it is technical analysis. So despite all the fancy and exotic tools it employs, technical analysis really just studies supply and demand in the market in an attempt to determine what direction or trend will continue in the future. In other words, Technical analysis attempts to understand the emotions in the market by studying the market itself as opposed to its components. If you understand the benefits and limitations of technical analysis, it can give you a new set of tools or skills that will enable you to be a better trader. So regardless of how you're going to trade, regardless of which method you want to use, regardless if you're going to trade from earnings reports and press releases or from fundamental analysis such as the economics calendar, you're still gonna use technical analysis because you might have, your best buddy might work for Samsung and he could tell you that nine, Galaxy 9 and Galaxy 9 Plus are exceeding expectations in sales. They're going through the roof and they're gonna announce the sales numbers next week. So you got a little bit of inside information. Now, you know when that number is released, Samsung stock is going to go through the roof, right? Well, how do you know that? You know it's going to give a bump to Samsung stock, but maybe Samsung stock's trading high already today. Or what point do you want to enter it? How long do you want to stay in the market? How high should it go when it moves up? Where would you want to get out and make your profit? You're not going to get this from your buddy's tip. You're only going to get this from technical analysis on your charts. Now, support and resistance 
is common jargon for the area on charts where price has a difficult time breaking through. Support levels tend to stop price from falling below a specific point, and resistance levels act as like a price ceiling that price cannot break. Knowing where these levels are make it much easier to decide when to open and close trades and how we can, but the question is how do we locate prices to begin with? Now, again, it's a very simple concept. Support and resistance can have numerous applications and can be identified in a multitude of ways. Traders can use support and resistance identification for managing risk in a strategy. Traders can also use support and resistance to grade market conditions and enter positions. And one of the more difficult concepts within technical analysis is grasp, grasping the premise of support and resistance. There are numerous ways to identify these levels. And even after identified, there's a plethora of ways to integrate them and trade with them. So <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a story here. And it may be boring, if, especially if you've heard it before. But if you listen to the little intricacies and listen to the details, you might be able to see how we can understand this concept and easily apply it. Now, we are trying to figure out where the price of gold might go higher or lower and at what levels as it moves up or down will it get delayed at what levels will be critical to its movement so imagine and we're just using hypothetical numbers i have no idea what gold is trading at today I haven't looked at the price of gold in weeks now in this building and we're going to use a building. We're going to use a four-story building instead of a price chart. And in this four-story building, it covers an entire square block. It's in the city, downtown London. It's right by a train station, right by the bus stop, right by the tram station. It's in a major big intersection. And the ground floor of this building is full of small shops. You can see a coffee shop. You can see a bakery. You can see, a, you know, a sandwich shop. You can see, a, you know, a, 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 a everything you need shop in there. You know, you see maybe a little dress store. You see maybe a barber shop in there. Okay. And it opens on all four sides and it's right at a busy street. So what you see is the bakery and the coffee shop have lines of people because it's early in the morning. Now, you're gold and I've painted you gold. You're wearing gold Mylar pants and gold Mylar shirt, and everybody's looking at you funny. And I paid across your chest $1,250. I take you to the elevator, and the elevator door opens. Okay. Now, remember, you're gold. You don't have hands, so you can't push any buttons. Now, the, when you get on the elevator, gold can either go up or down. Right? None of us know. Now the door shuts and the elevator moves up. And now you're doing some observation. You're watching price move up on a chart. And the door opens on the first floor and you see it's these beautiful, luxurious office suites. You can see wood, you can see all of this stuff. You see beautiful carpet and you see the signs you know, office one, two, three, four is, you know, such and such a law firm. Office number 247 is a doctor suite. Office number 248 is accountants. And office number one is, you know, and it's beautiful. It's hushed and quiet and dark wood and very, very luxurious. Now, the door closes and it goes up to floor number two. Well, floor number two is you can see that there is a law library because the signs when the door, remember, you can't control anything and you can't get off the elevator. But when the door opens, you see the signs that say law library, lounge, conference room one, conference room two, conference room three, conference room four. So you know this is kind of a public area used by the people who have this, the offices below. 
And if they're having a conference and need a conference room, the lawyers need to come up and use the law library. Whatever they're having, they if they're having a meeting, they'll use a conference room because the downstairs offices are, are suites of offices. So the door closes again, but you notice as the door is closing that it says in conference room three that there is a conference from 11 o'clock until three o'clock. Conference room, no, I'm sorry, from, 11, from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Conference room number four has a conference from two to four. Door closes. Elevator moves up to the third floor. Door opens there, and you can see it is storage space, basically. No. And you can see the bins and everything else. This is where all the doctors and the lawyers store their files and store their back papers, not down at their, you know, in their office suites down below. And the door closes again, and the elevator moves up to the what's called the roof deck. Door opens there, and you see this beautiful, like, lunchroom where people can go sit and have lunch. It's a smoking area. You see all the balconies with tables and chairs outside with ashtrays and all the signs that say smoking that way. You see vending machines. You know, you see coffee machines. You see, you know, you know candy machines. And you can see that, you know, there's lots of seating areas. So people coming up at lunchtime can sit up there and have lunch. People can bring their coffee up. They can go outside and smoke. Now, what has this got to do with gold and what it's got to do with your price of gold and what's got to do with your charts? Well, let's start doing some analysis. So you're stuck on this elevator. Now the door closes and it goes all the way down to the basement and it opens up in the basement and you can see there's a janitor's closet. You can see there's some storage. You can see the trash bins. You can see where the cleaning staff has their offices and their lockers and you can see where all the mops and the brooms are stored. Door closed again, goes back to the ground level. Okay, now you're pretty smart, right? All of you are. Now, I told you the story is long, but it, you know, you're going to learn something from this. So bear with me. Now, the doors go up, the elevator goes up to the ground floor again, and you can see a clock, and it's 8 30 in the morning. You can also see the coffee shop that is packed. And while the doors are open, the elevator fills up with people. Lots of people. You're pushed in the back corner. Well, <clears throat> being a smart person, you know that almost all of those people, if not every one of them, is probably going to get off on their first floor because they all look like employees rushing to work. They all have their coffee in their hands. They have this and, you know, they're still wearing their street jackets. And you can tell it's 830 in the morning. They're all coming in. They have to be at work by nine o'clock or, or whatever. Some are running late because it's being 830. So you can guesstimate or project that elevator is going to definitely stop on the first floor. And you can also determine that most, if not all of those people are going to get out. You know, there could be a smoker or two in the crowd that want a cigarette before they go to the office. but most likely they're going to all go in the office, put their backpacks down their hand, and then maybe go up to, up to the roof they want to smoke. So what have you just done? You've done some easy analysis on how price might move in a step. You've looked at the people in the elevators, the volume. The elevator going to first floor is your first level of support. Because imagine when an elevator is moving you up, the floor is supporting you. And the ceiling above your head is your resistance. Now, you can also pretty much figure when that elevator door closes and the elevator is now empty, it's going to go back to that ground level and it's going to fill up again. The volume's getting high because why? Everybody's coming to work. Door closes, goes up to the first floor. Now, at the first floor, two people step on that elevator. They could be going to the ground floor, but there's a good chance they're going to go up to the roof to smoke. And so there's a probability it might go all the way up to that rooftop to smoke, or it could go down to that ground level. So if we do some analysis and we start thinking about it, we know that most likely that elevator during the day isn't going to stop on that second floor until around 11 o'clock when that conference starts. 
there might be some odd time that an attorney wants to run up and use that law library, but that odds are very small. Okay, but it can happen. We also know there's a good probability every time that elevator picks people up on the first floor and doesn't go down but goes up, it's most likely going to go to that fourth floor, that roof deck, where the people are going to smoke because that's where people have been at work for an hour or two. They're going upstairs to, with their coffee in their hand and going to go out on that deck and smoke. Now, there's a possibility that somebody could be stopping on the second floor to set up the conference, or they might be going up to the third floor to get something out of the storage lockers for whatever they need for you know that case that day. But we've established major levels of support and resistance and minor levels of support and resistance. Now, I'm almost finished. I'm sorry, but we're almost finished. Now, if you can look at the time of day, you can apply more because you know around 11 o'clock, you're going to have lots of trips from that ground level up to that second level conference room, back to the ground level to pick up those people that are coming to conference, back to that second level. So you know 11 o'clock is a critical time. You know at, two, at, at or 10 o'clock, I'm sorry, 10 o'clock when that conference is. And you know at 12, a lot of people are going to be coming down. You also know between 10 and 12, that elevator stops on two, most likely it's taking somebody up to smoke. Now, what is the 10 o'clock and what is the two o'clock? Why is that important? Those are the economics counter time economic events are going to come out. So those are certain things that you know is going to happen on a clock. So you can help predict the way an asset will move. Now, what we've been doing is we take away the first floor, second floor, third floor, and think of these as price levels. What we've done is we've defined levels of support and resistance. Okay. And it's just the opposite going up as it is down an elevator. When you're going down, the floor is your resistance. You got to break through that floor. And the ceiling is your support. When the elevator is moving up, the floor is pushing you higher while the elevator, the floor above you is your ceiling, is your resistance level. So think of this, or when you think of support and resistance, think of it just like the elevator and think of it when you're looking at a chart as these floors. Because that's why we have what's called S1, S2, S3, R1, R2, and R3, which is support level one, support level two, support level three, resistance one, resistance two, resistance three, or we call them major and minor support and resistance levels. Now, the reason I haven't told you where you get these from is there are many different ways to get these levels. But let's just first master the concept. So defining the concept of support and resistance is fairly simple. When discussing the context of a stock market, it defines a level at which buyers and sellers step into the market and where the law of supply and demand comes into play. So let's think about that, the elevator. Buyers and sellers, that's the people getting off the elevators and on the elevators. That's the people going up the elevator to the higher floor or the guys going to the lower floor. Imbalances in supply and demand create support and resistance levels. For example, when an overwhelmingly high number of buyers step into the market, an indication of support is being put into the market. Conversely, a large number of sellers indicates there is an overhead resistance preventing that asset from moving higher. Now, the price levels which create support and resistance in a stock or an asset only tell half the story. We mentioned a key phrase before, overwhelmingly high. Volume is the second half of the equation and shows us the strength behind the selling or the buying at support and resistance levels. And this is why I talked to you about the number of people getting on that elevator. Because if you think about the number of people flying on that elevator, that's the volume. So when you're, when you're at 8.30 in the morning, you have lots of people going on that elevator, that volume's getting high, and you can also project that they're all going to get off on that first level. 
late in the day, or at least the price is going to stop it. The elevator is going to stop at that first level. Later in the day, when the elevator is stopping on the ground level and just one person is getting on, statistically, you can kind of look at the time and figure out where they might go because there's only one person. That person could push the roof deck, could push three, could push two, could push one. So when volume's low, it's harder to predict what's going to happen because the buyers and the sellers are stepping out of the marketplace. Now, as volume goes up or volume remains high, it supports those levels. So if you're moving towards a support level, you're moving towards a resistance level and moving up, if you still see volume climbing, most likely it's going to push through that floor to the next level. If you see volume waning, then you're probably going to touch that resistance level and fall back to the next support level. Why? Well, in the markets, what happened is price is moving up, and there's a certain point in which the buyers are saying, this asset's getting a little bit too pricey for me. Or an, a buyer who stepped in the market earlier is exiting the market right? because it reached, where, oh, it reached a level where he was happy to take his profit. So what happens when the buyers step out of, back from the market and say, wait a minute, this asset's gotten a little bit too high. We're not going to buy at this level. And the buyers become sellers because they're booking their profit. The asset eases down from that resistance level and falls back to its support level. When it falls back down, the buyers get more interested and say, ah, okay, price is down back at a reasonable level, not back where it started at but at a reasonable level. So I'm going to buy into that market again. A lot of times you have the guy who came in the market earlier, sold out at that resistance level, and buy back in at the support level. Okay. So these are levels that help you understand or expect what should happen in the market. There's no guarantee. Support and let resistance does not mean that the market can't break through that level and continue up just like that elevator. There's nothing that says that elevator can't continue up to the roof deck. And there's nothing that says that elevator won't turn around that roof deck and go straight down to that basement. But there are ways that you can project where it will or what it will do. Okay. Because most likely if 10 people get on that elevator and the roof deck, most likely there's a much higher probability, especially after it's 10 o'clock, that it's going to stop at that second level. Then it could eat the second floor where the conference is. Then it's going to ease down to that first level if it's going to continue going down. And then it's going to go down to the ground level. It's not going to just fall straight. It can end up at the basement, but you can see what's happening at each of those levels. And then you can decide what to do. So, again, this is. We're talking about the concept. Now, there are many ways to get these levels of an elevator. The first is what I call eyeballing. And eyeballing is exactly what you did on the elevator. You're looking at historical levels where prices had or price stopped in the past. And these can either come from significant highs and lows or swing highs and lows in the most recent markets, or it can come back depending on where this asset was, when this asset was trading at that price before. What we want to do is see at the current market price, how did buyers react in the past when the asset was at this price? Now, you might have had that asset at that price th three hours ago and then six hours ago and yesterday and day before, or you might be having an asset that hasn't been near this price for three months. Sometimes when you have the odd things like cryptocurrency and Bitcoin sales up to 20000 you've never had it before. And even when it's easing back down and it's back down to 10000 you might have to go pretty far back to find these critical levels where prices touch and had not gone through but had some type of reaction. So let's go over actually and look at a couple charts. And let me show you what this looks like in real life. So hold on, let me pop up some charts on your screen. 
Now, what we're looking at is the ETX platform real quickly. And you can see on my chart there, the Euro US dollar, we have these red lines, these purple lines, and these blue lines, dashes and dots, because that's just what I've queued them up as. Okay. These are support and resistance levels around the current price. And as we see, price for the Euro, US dollar, is trading right now about 123.37. And our support level, are, and this is our major support level and our most important, which is slightly right below the price. This has come from a critical point in the past of where this asset has traded at this level and where it's had tops and bottoms in previous tops. Swing highs or swing lows or lots of closes at this price in the past. We also have our top price here, which would be our resistance. And in our case, these levels are called pivot point levels. And these are have come from a pivot, what's called a pivot point calculator. And these are published levels. They're not secret levels. You can get them by using a pivot point calculator. On Trader Pro, you just click under your uh, your tools and click on pivot points, and it'll open up a little screen, ask you to pick the colors you like and how wide you want these lines, you want dashes and dots, and it'll put them right on your chart for you. You can also go to places like investing.com and um, FX Street, any place that offers you technical analysis and look for what's called a pivot point chart. Now, this is one of the easiest ways to get support and resistance. And this will give you those critical prices. And when you take these from a pivot point chart, you simply just draw them onto your current chart. Hold on a second. Let me just get rid of my markings here. Get my pen back on. So you can see here on this Bitcoin chart where these levels have been drawn on the chart. You see the orange, you see the yellow, you see the green. Now these came from back in the past when Bitcoin was trading at these prices in the past. And there, these levels are where traders had hemmed and hawed in the past and made highs and lows or had a problem breaking through or falling below, hold true forever. You can use your support and resistance levels. You draw them way into the future and any time the asset is trading around that price that, that they become critically important support and resistance levels. Now, the more time they're touched and the more time they support price, the more important they are. Now, if we look at this green level here, I'm just gonna get my marker on for you. This green level right here, that's been projected from the past, but look at what happened here when it was more recently trading at that level. Look what happened here when it was trading at that level. Now, in current market, look what happened here. Okay, We see that the buyers, each time it got around that price, hemmed and hawed. There was some type of reaction to the price. Whether it eventually went above it or below, it didn't make a difference. When it got to that price, we got a few minutes of breathing space as buyers decided what to do or sellers decided what to do. Now. Let me just bring up another chart here for you. Okay, so we can see here on the USD JPY, this is a one hour chart, and we can see major support levels that have been put on the chart and drawn on in green lines right here. And in this case, we're also using Fibonacci levels. And you can see the Fibonacci levels right here which also give us levels of support and resistance. And we can see how the price, this level was established back here, projected forward. And then look at this, how important it was just in the more recent trading. And then we have our resistance level up here was, that was came from our swing high, swing high here and brought forward. And look how important that was. That price came up to that resistance level, bounced off, came back down to that support level. Now, it fell below the support level, but didn't get much of movement between that support level, moved right back up to that 
support level. So it helps us analyze the markets. Now, if we take this and combine it with volume, let's get RSI off of here. Let's add volume on here. Okay, and volume just sits down below. We can then determine how important these levels were to the market. So we can see when it broke this support level here, look at the increase in the market. So it means that buyers have decided to continue pushing the price lower or the sellers. But we had increased volume when it broke that resist that support level. So that means it's probably going to continue down to its next major support level right here. Now, if you were in the market and you had bought an asset, say you saw this asset and it was trending up and you said, oh, okay. And you bought it somewhere at this, it, when it broke the major support level here and started moving, you bought here. As it came to its next resistance or support level, and there's a resistance level when you're moving up towards it, you would be sitting on the edge of your seat, deciding whether to stay in the market or not. Okay. When you saw it break right through there, you decide that that uptrend would most likely continue. As it came up here and formed a retracement, you're panicking saying, should I stay, should I go? It comes down to this previous support level where you were worried last time, bounces off it and moves straight up. So you ended up with a good solid trade but when it hit this resistance level and couldn't break through it and started moving down, you exited the marketplace. So you were able to take an asset and trade it from there to there. That was a nice, profitable trade. So let's go back to my PowerPoint for a few minutes here. Okay, so now remember, and I've talked, told you this over and over, another principle of technical analysis stipulates that support can turn into resistance and vice versa. So just like you were seeing on the live charts a minute ago, as price moves through that support level and breaks above it, it then becomes this resistance level as price is gonna fall back towards it. The more times you see that that price has become critical to the markets, the more important that price is to the markets. And sometimes you will find beautiful trade opportunities and assets that are bouncing right between a resistance, a support level and a resistance level. And once you've seen this happen, you've had three touches going up and down, you can sit there and trade it in between that level for a very long time successfully. But this level is so critical you can actually formulate it into your trading. So at this point, when price broke that level, came all the way down, when it came back up, it became the resistance level. We saw it bounce off of there, come back down, come there. We know that that asset is gonna continue down. Moves back up, can't get through it, continues back down. Now, again, there's no rule that it can't break through. Sooner or later, uptrends end, downtrends start, downtrends end, uptrends start. Here, it breaks through there, and it moves back into its same trading range that it had a year before. And once you've identified that now, guess what? You can take trades safely every time it hits this support level and hopefully get out when it hits resistance level. But you'd also be buying every time it came up to this resistance level bounce, you'd be buying. So you'd have up trades and down trades going on simultaneously. Now, this is also a time or this is also one of the tools you would use in what we call order entry system. Okay. Because you can use the order entry system to decide to enter a trade. But you have to decide using order entry because you're not going to use a market order. You want to open a limit order. What price would you want to open that order? Well, you would use your support and resistance level to decide that. Where you want to put your stop loss. 
you would use your support and resistance. So if this was the support level here, okay, and you were trading an asset to go up here, or you entered it somewhere here, where would you want to put your, your stop loss? Slightly below that support level. You don't want to put it so close that if it just breaks through for a second, you're going to get stopped out. But you want to place it pretty close because if it breaks through that support level, it's most likely going to fall to the next. Where would you want to put your take profit level? At the resistance level. Where would you want to panic? So when you're using things like OCOs, one cancels another, you can decide, okay, if the assets can move up, I'll buy at this price right above support. And if it's going to fall down, I'll buy right below this level at resistance. And you can put a, an order in through an OCL, and whichever one happens, it will get executed. So there's many ways to using support and resistance. But a couple of tips are, number one, watch for breakouts. As we noted, price can and do cross the support and resistance level on the way to forming new trend lines. Use the current level as guides, but realize that they will change over time. When charting the price action of an asset, expect to see at least two price bounces before considering any given higher low to be a resistance or support level. Preferably, you want to see at least three bounces since each one strengthens the signal. Now, it doesn't have to be in today's trading. It could have been last week, last month, when this asset was in this range, how many times did it bounce off of that price? How many times did it respond to that price? Now, the fact is, you can draw lines all the way back to a historical charts and bring them forward. Because the lines have value in the current market whenever the asset is trading at price. But the older the lines are, if it hasn't touched that level in a recent time, they have less significance. And that's why sometimes we refer to them as minor levels. Now, asset prices tend to test support and resistance levels without breaking them through them. You'll likely become nervous when, price, when this happens. It's normal. Calm your nerves and learn to trust your charts. When a breakout occurs, it usually does so in the context of forming a new price trend. Four, don't get lazy with your charts. The more you trade a particular asset, the more you'll feel as you know how its price will move. Be warned that price action has a way of surprising even the most experienced traders. Intuition is important, but tracking price action, keeps accurate, keeping accurate charts, and collecting reliable data are much more so. If any of the concepts seem complex and confusing, don't worry. With time, you'll find it exactly how simple they are. Once you start using them, once you start locating them, once you start to see how the markets react, and whether you're using Fibonacci levels, whether you're using eyeballing and just drawing them on your charts, whether you're using swing high and swing lows, whether you're using pivot point calculators, okay, you can use them all together or separate. What I do a lot of times, I'll use Fibonacci and I'll use my eyeballing and I'll use pivot points. And then where I see the, the three have are very, very close to each other, I'll call that a support zone, and I will draw that whole thing as one big area because you can't define it exactly to the, to the pip. So I'll say that's a very strong support zone, and I'll fill it in with a magic marker and make that whole zone between those few pips because I have three different support levels supporting me there. Okay. But just remember, these areas are not random. Just don't go by me putting your straight edge on a chart and trying to draw that. Look for something of significance, swing highs and swing lows. Sometimes you'll see on a bar chart or a canvas, you'll see all of these prices where there's opens, close, highs and lows all at one price over a whole period of time. That's significant. Okay. Don't look for just one swing. Only in the most current one. So here in this chart we're looking at right over here, what we've done is, is the prices move down. Okay, we take the swing point of the low. That's simply where it's retracing. We come back up. Now when it came back down and swung back down with a, another swing low at that price, that price has become important, even though it went back, it broke through it with no problem at all. But look what happened when price moved back up to that. 
look at all the price, how difficult it was for price to break that new resistance line, which is the opposite of the support line. Okay. And we saw all of that happening, and that was created by these two swing lows in the past. And now we had the third, and that's how it's very, very important. But there's many ways you could do this. And if you, the easiest way is to go read about all the different ways. Eyeballing is one of the most lackadaisical ways, but one of the most, if not lackadaisical, open to interpretation ways, where Fibonacci levels are drawn on a chart in a very precise manner. Support and resistance through pivot points are calculations. I like eyeballing because I want to get my hands on. I want to see where my brain tells me prices are critical. So take a long look and be careful. Like I said, eyeballing is my first step. Now, it's not an exact science, but it makes me feel like I'm part of the price. I'm part of the chart. I understand why these prices are critical. But the key is identification, key support and resistance levels is an essential ingredient to successful technical analysis. Even though it's sometimes difficult to establish exact support and resistance levels, being aware of their existence and location can greatly enhance analysis and forecasting abilities. If a security is approaching an important support level, it can serve as an alert just to be more vigilant. Same thing if it's supporting a, 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 a resistance level. It might say, hey, maybe I should move my stop loss up. Maybe I might want to get out of the markets now. Maybe I should look at other things. But it gives you a way of being aware and working with the markets. So that's it for us tonight. And like I said, if you use the ETX charts, just simply go under the indicators, click on pivot points. It'll open up a little thing and just ask you what colors to pick out your colors, how thick you want your line, and it'll just do it automatically for you. It'll drop them right on your charts. So once again, thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.